Okay, and now it's time for what may be the hardest part of this whole adventure, which is uh, cutting a perfect circle, or at least as close as you can. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our measuring tape and we're going to measure 8 inches again because we're using the 8 inch pan. And uh, we're going to look at the 4, um, four you know, because 4 is the center line um, to try to line it up, you know, get the 4 lined up with the center hole as a halfway mark for 8. And then you kind of put your finger uh, where 8 is because that's where you're going to be marking with your marker and that's going to show you basically how big you need to make your hole voila next you take your measuring tape and uh, what I personally would do is measure from this lip to see what it measures out to and you could even mark your measuring tape just to make sure you stay on line. And now you're gonna have to go all around the wheel uh, with this same uh, mark to keep the same uh, distance all around and get as close to a perfect, perfect hole as you can. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, that's basically, uh, if I could get this lighting right, uh, how you uh, try to make a perfect circle uh, without having the proper tools. Now, uh, I have tools that I've, I made, um, kind of like homemade tools that help me draw, you know, close to perfect circles without having to go through all that. Um, but I'm kind of putting myself in your shoes as if, you know, you don't have, you know, the proper tools um, to do that. And that's just basically one way to do it to go about it like a shortcut to kind of help you uh get as close to perfect of a circle as you can because it's very important when you cut into the wheel that it's not you know oval or off or anything like that and now it's time for the fun part actually cutting into the wheel now there are various tools you could use um you know like a jigsaw or a jigsaw um I use a box cutter, um, highly dangerous by the way, kids don't try this at home, don't say I didn't say it, uh, but um, I use a box cutter to kind of cut into the plastic and if you have a heat gun, um, it will be a lot easier if you just kind of go around it with a heat gun and it, it softens the plastic a little bit and makes it a lot easier to just kind of follow through uh, with the cut. Um, however, I'm going to pretend that we don't all uh, own heat guns and I'm going to do it the hard way, the uh, muscle it out way. Um, but you have to be really careful with how you hold the uh, box cutter um, should you decide to use a box cutter. Because if you put too much power into, you know, pulling or pushing or whatever, you could slip and um, accidentally slice your finger off or, you know, mess the wheel up. Uh, that's the, the least of your worries. You know, your safety is more important than anything. Um, but uh, so, yeah, let's get the muscling. I don't even know if that's a real word. Is muscling a word? It's a word now. Okay, so I went ahead and I threw on a glove. Um makes me feel safer uh, when cutting into this um, I figured maybe it would slow the blade down just in case you slip you know it will cut a little little bit into this before it gets to my skin I don't know it makes me feel better whatever all right so eh? now I hold it like this to kind of have a more of a control over it um, you know this you don't have much control uh, pushing you don't really have control like if you were to flip the blade this way you know you could and uh, I use this a lot 
yeah, so I hold it like this, kind of place my thumb, and just slowly work my way around. Um, the good news about this wheel is that it's a soft uh, type of plastic. Um, you'll come to realize that different uh, manufacturers or different wheels um, have different like plastic compounds that they're made from. Um, this one is a little softer than usual. So it's a little easier to cut into without actually needing to heat it. Um, one thing you wanna make sure is that you stay on your line, um, no matter what. Uh, if you go off your line, at least make sure it's on the inside and not the outside. You, you would rather your hole be too small than too big. Trust me. Trust me. Learn from my mistakes. I don't want you guys making the same mistakes I did. I sound like a parent. All right, so halfway there. Almost, almost, I probably should have time-lapsed this. But um, you guys could use whatever technique or however comfortable you feel um, going around with it. This actually is the most comfortable way right now for me. So this is how I'm doing it but I'm still in enough control that it won't slip and you know go crazy or accidentally slice uh, any body parts. So, all right, now that we completely went around our circle, you can see, you know, the outer edge is pretty much able to be popped out but now we have to deal with the center um, because the center actually goes all the way through and it's connected inside usually on on other models um, sometimes they're connected sometimes they're not so sometimes when you cut it it will pop out sometimes they're connected like this one is uh, for instance um, in some cases you could just kind of twist it and uh, apply pressure and it will eventually snap so that's what I do Oh yeah. Now it, it it doesn't look that great, but don't worry. Um, all you have to do is just kind of push it on the uh, the shaft, like the uh, shaft that goes through the the uh, car um, or the axis or whatever where the wheel goes back on to kind of open this back up. Or you could just use your marker and just kind of pop it back open. Um, the good news about it, like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle here because we will be using back the uh, little plastic bushing that centers it. And then when we put our pan on the front, we're going to, you know, drill a hole straight through the back to make sure it's centered that way also. So this really has nothing to do with the balance. One thing I do want to mention about this wheel, um, as you can see, it's pretty hollow. Um, it really doesn't have a structural support system going on on the inside of it. Um, however, there are wheels that do come with a skeletal uh, system that helps uh, stabilize and strengthen the wheel like, that you will have to cut into uh, individually once you make your initial cut on the uh, outside. Um, for example, uh, this one. Uh, this is another wheel from a different model um, that I had to cut into. And if you look closely, you see these little tabs right here all around that you have to go back in once you uh, cut your outer uh, ring you have to go back in and kind of separate them and you know kind of get those out or you know before you could actually get your face out um, and this actually is another example of a wheel that's not connected on the inside um, by the center so this one is that's why we had to break that but this one isn't so once you get these little tabs off, this face pops out uh, fairly easily.
one tool I use to actually help me get these uh, tabs out um, is this little scraper tool. Uh, you could get it um, from any hardware store, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, and uh, I kind of sharpen the edge to make it sharp. And, you know, once I cut my outer rim, uh, I locate each tab and I kind of go in and I'll get like a, a rubber mallet and just kind of tap, 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 you know, as I go around. And that's how I actually uh, bust off these little tabs. Moving on. Now that we have our hole cut, uh, let's test our pan to see how it fits. Well, I mean, kind of loose, but it, it's pretty much on point. So, one down, three to go. Now, there's a very important factor uh, when it comes to cutting your hole. And the reason I was saying that it's better for it to be uh, cut smaller than larger um, because further on uh, as you go into the uh, customizing of the wheel you're gonna have to eventually drill through it and if your hole is not centered or off in any way uh, when you go to drill that hole um, you're gonna have a kind of funky uh, thing going on um, when the car drives so you know the more precise you are whether you do it the way I just taught you with the measuring tape going around and marking it um, or if you have a better way to do uh, your measurements um, the main thing uh, to be aware of is to make sure that it is precise